Okay, so this is my first time doing this, so I'm going to, um, I guess try it off the cuff because I'm just talking right now. Hi, my name's Alistair. Hi, internet. And, um, right now I think I'm going to talk because I kind of have an idea for two things I might be doing on the internet, and then also to talk about something else. Um, two plans I'm thinking of are I have two ideas for web series I could do. One of them is um, kind of like Browse Held High, but kind of different. What I'd be doing is um, looking at different directors. It could be like blockbuster directors, Hollywood directors, art house directors, foreign, and just going over their body of work just to see, well, not only critiquing how the films themselves are, but also the identity of that director in his films. And I got a couple of ideas for that one. That one I think I might do character-based for if I do that as, some, as a f series. Um, ideas for that I can already do are Wes Anderson, because I just got a couple more films of his to watch before I could do it. Um, can easily do Mark Webb, because he's only done two films, and I've seen both of them. But he's also done music videos, and I could get a good sense of that. Um, trying to think it. Um, let's go. Burn... Bert, the guy, the guy from Pixar who did Incredibles. I can do him. Um, Brad Bird, that was his name. Um, the other guy from Pixar who did Wally and Finding Nemo because those are awesome. Um, I can do. There's um, the guy who did Amelie. Getting names are off the bat. This is really bad. Um, so. Tarantino, because I just got to watch Inglorious Bastards and Jackie Brown for that. So, I mean, I can do stuff for that one. I think I will, um, think I will wait to let that develop, though, so that way I don't end up stumbling like I am right now. Um, other series will kind of be more closer to this kind of vlog style, but talking about me, but it's going to be me reviewing Another form of media that I really love, which is, surprisingly enough, for someone who's a music tech major, not going to be music because I don't think I'm qualified to properly do that. Um, no, anime, because I'm a big anime fan, and I always want to talk about it, and don't really have a lot of people to talk to it about, so I figure I can give my opinions of it online, so... That's what I'm go I'm going to do. That one's gonna be very quick to do to do if I start it because I've seen a lot over the past few months actually. Few from before that, but I can talk about all there's a big chunk that I watched not recently, but yeah, I can talk about stuff. About stuff. Um uh, maybe just like rewatch a couple, skim through just to make sure that I know what I'm doing, but i planning on doing that as well. And then, third plan, which is the other reason I'm doing this video, is I am planning on, when I finish my, um, when I finish seeing the films I'm considering for it, doing a video where I'm talking about the, what I consider the best films of the year, and kind of ranking them as a list. Because I just like making lists. And I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to wait because I still have to see, as for films, I, for films I'm considering, I still have to see um, The Hobbit, which I'm going to see soon. Um, Lincoln, Cloud Atlas, Looper, Holy Motors, and Beasts of the Southern Wild, because I'm considering all those as well, even though I haven't seen them. Um, everything except The Hobbit I might end up looking at online, which will be bad, but I'll see them and I'll be able to do this video, because 
movies are expensive and some of these I missed in theaters. Um, so, and as for, so I mean, to make this not a complete waste though, I will talk briefly about films I have seen already that are being considered for the list. These are, this is just a short list, it's not the actual list, these are just my nominations. Um, first one I'll start with is the most recent one I saw, which was a few days ago, Dingo, Jingo Unchained, Django Unchained, damn it, um, I guess not really bad, yeah, Django Unchained, which is Tarantino being Tarantino, which is always a lot of fun, and he does what he does best, really like really likes the way it played out. I don't think the performance is really good in it. And that last third came... You would not expect that last third. Third from the way it was being advertised. So, pleasant surprise. Pleasant and gory. But Tarantino, so... Um, Perks being a wallflower. That That is a definite pleasant surprise. Did not read the book, was not expecting much going into it, had to see it with my sister because I promised I'd see it with her, and I ended up really liking it. Um, lived or died by its um, acting, but the acting was really good and, and was really impressed by the adaptation work and really surprised that the director of the film was the guy who wrote that adaptation. So, yeah, I'm really impressed that it turned out the way it did. It could have turned out so much worse. Um, Avengers, which, it was a big film. Um, Whedon's getting better at actually doing film. He's still a great writer, he's still good at characters. It still has its flaws. He still seems like he's writing more for television than film in it, but he's getting better at it, and this is the best he's been yet, despite the fact of how much better Serenity is than it. I'm kind of can't talk about that because, um, loyalty. Um, so I'm not going, don't feel obligated to say much about that, because that one's been talked to to death about. Amazing Spider-Man, similar boat to, um, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Um, what it, and it is basic in that it could have turned out so much worse, but I was glad that, for one thing, I'm glad that Mark Webb got it, because even though he didn't write it, like, he also didn't write, um, 500 Days of Summer, He's good with his direction, very versatile, again, because of his music video background, but he's his biggest strength so far, which is why I think I could do an episode on him, despite him only having done two films, is he is very good at characterization. Plotting itself, Raimi has him better at, but I like the Spider-Man better than Raimi's Spider-Man, and I like his Gwen Stacy better than Raimi's um, Mary Jane. So, it's pleasant surprise, probably lower tier, if here the other stuff could potentially do a lot better than it. Um, Dark Knight Rises, that was a big, big task, and Nolan was obviously going to f um, fumble a bit at, on it, but for the task that he had at hand, he did it admirably, and it is a big mess, and there are a lot of flaws in it, but for what he was making, it was gr it was a great film. I will, I don't regret seeing it. I think it was a satisfactory way to end that whole trilogy. Maybe it doesn't have the impact or potency or, um... The immediacy of Batman Begins or Dark Knight, but it is essentially a conclusion and a messy but 
satisfactory one. Um, Cabin in the Woods. Whedon again as a writer, not the director, though. Um, but he makes a strong case in it. And, oh yeah, another film that I have to see for this list, Seven Psychopaths. Um, for a similar reason as this. I love the metafictional stuff. I love stuff like Adaptation, where it is basically... We are going to tell you every single thing going on in here and say, and make essentially make it a joke. So, and this film got so we so down that rabbit hole that you you start to question how much how self aware they kind of are. And at the end of the day, the answer is ultimately we don't care because we just wanted to do. We just want to show you what's going on. This is pretty much what could have, what it, what everything could be. So I really liked that. I really liked how the characters were just one big joke. <laughs> Very funny film, despite it not actually being a comedy. So it's always that. Um, and then last film that I saw that this year that I'm considering. There's still more that I saw, but I'm not. Moonrise Kingdom, which don't want to talk too much about, but it is one. I am hoping that this is the Wes Anderson film for people who don't like Wes Anderson films. It is that good, and I am hoping that with this, more people will discover it, will see his films, and realize that he is kind of a. Very, very, very good director, very good auteur, and needs a lot more work and a lot more exposure, because, I mean, not to say that he doesn't have any, but he needs more. He's a, more, but for what he is, he's really great. Um, so, that's what I got for now. I'm going, and I am going to... I guess, work on watching the rest of the films that I'm considering for the list. If you're st wondering stuff like Argo and The Master, I don't really have much of an interest to see them. At least right now, Argo I might, Master I might. Master I won't because won't for a while because still I haven't actually seen a Paul Thomas Anderson film before. And my introduction is either going to be Magnolia or There Will Be Blood when I get around to watching either of them. So, there's that. There's a lot of... I didn't see a lot of things. Not that there was a lot of things that I didn't see, so that could, that's a good explanation of why a good number of films aren't on here. And... Um, and some films, just like Flight, I just have no interest to see at all. It's just... It just doesn't appeal to appeal to me, and I'll admit that everything has its merit, but I won't. I just don't feel like watching it. Same thing with Life of Pi. Probably really good, not for me. And that's how I guess I'm going to end it. I'll make that list, and I'll do my other projects when I get around to them, which will hopefully be soon. Probably the anime first, because I can do that easy. So, see ya.